welcome to a uh, my first session on BFD2. I don't. I'm trying to aim for these as as small and quick, kind of 60 to two minute um, sessions. In that, uh, I know what it's like to be on that side, and just want a, a quick access to information. What we're going to talk about here is the load up. Uh, BFT2, as it starts loading, uh, goes through all the directories that you've identified uh, in the setup configuration. Uh, you don't have to read in all the uh, the samples, uh, and there sometimes there's a reason that you don't want to. For example, if we look at the memory being used, um, I've got uh, three or four expansion packs. Now, this is interesting. I've got a warning here that says some of my pieces are unlicensed. I've recently purchased uh, the 8K bit or 8-bit K, 8K bit system, and this is an error that's come up. I don't quite know how to deal with this one because I've got to find out what's not licensed, but I uh, I bought the software and I bought all the expansion packs. If you notice, just loading up, um, I'm sitting at about 1 gig, uh, 1.2 gig of, of memory. Uh, it is a bit of a hog, and what I found, I used to run this with uh, my DAW, which is Sonar, and recently I've switched into Wendo. And uh, my new thinking is that I'm going to run BFD strictly on uh, a secondary machine um, hooked into my DAW through external audio. Um, so basically I have a computer that's dedicated to just managing my, my percussion. Um, notice that even now the CPU is still running fairly heavy. Uh, so this is the basic BFT2 interface, and what I want to do focus on uh, this morning is just this section here. If I click here, this gives me my setup, and these locations here, the neat thing with BFT2 is you don't need to store all of your uh, your samples in, in one directory. You can actually spread them out, and um, this is a learning curve for me because the first time uh, that I purchased it, I, I basically clogged up my, my C drive with all my samples. And then I learned that I can install the application on my C drive, but the different expansion packs I can move on to uh, my other drives or uh, external FireWire drives, which becomes very handy because you don't need to load in all of the samples all of the time. Um, so very easily you can basically just say I want to add in a new directory. And you just tell it where it is and uh, and it'll scan at any moment or at any time you can say trash and rebuild. Um, you do lose some presets if you do that, uh, but from time to time you just have to. Uh, other components in here that I go to from time to time is you might go into MIDI uh, and uh, check out some of the features or turn things on and off, but primarily under here uh, I look at my data and this is where I tell it to go look for my samples. Um, you may get into situations where you load your own samples or bring samples from other applications, and it's uh, another hap uh, easy way for you to kind of manage all of these.